uh, I kind of feel very, very delighted because the topic of uh, this discussion is very close to my heart. And I can take two routes to share with you my feelings in thinking about this topic. But I thought that it would be much better for me to share with you not my intellectual understanding of this area, but share with you my personal experiences of the area. So I will focus on sharing with you three, four stories of my engagement in community service uh, in this country and abroad. But the focus will be on this country. The first example is uh, my involvement in admission at LUMS in the first batch of bachelor's degree. And we were getting students from all over the country, mostly English medium, Tamu. And uh, one group of applicants was coming from Karachi Grammar School. And I was beginning to discover the confidence, the social awareness among different groups of students from different school backgrounds. And to my great surprise and happiness, I found out that the applicants from Karachi Grammar School were showing a lot of social awareness and confidence in the interview. Every summer, they were sent to some slum areas in their neighborhood to work for two weeks, to work for two weeks. And they shared with us that the social awareness has actually given us the feeling why social work or community work is important. And I thought, what an amazing experience of it. And I hope that all policy makers would actually give heed to this suggestion that the community service should not start from higher education. If you allow me, I'll say that it must start from actually the home of every individual. Because the dignity of labor, of work, you learn from your family structures. And there, if the child is pampered and all his needs are gratified, beyond actually even his or her requirement, this pampered child will grow not as an integrated human being. Will be fragmented, his soul, his body, his mind would be together. And therefore would lack the awareness that he or she would need in order to make any contribution to the society development. That is one. And what did I learn from this? What I learned from this was that it's very important for our students to actually be exposed to community service. That was one lesson. Second, I got engaged in a microfinance organization. And this experience as a teacher took me to visit different villages in the periphery of this great city called Lahore. And what I discovered was that while in the center of Lahore, you had all kind of comfort. But in the periphery, people were living, to use a very mild word, in appalling living and health conditions. And I found out that microfinance, small loans given to women, not men, given to women in these villages, made a lot of difference in their life standards. They use that money to set up small shops, they use that money to actually start maybe a roti baking kind of, you know, tandoor. And they told us that this has helped us to actually fight, not only fight, but come out of this poverty trap. And I was so excited, and I came back, and I shared these experiences with my students to excite them. Because I felt that community service cannot be injected into students through coercion. It has to be that you have to ignite 
a fire of deep passion in them for them to say, aha, this is the work that I would like to do. So this is the second example. Thirdly, I got an assignment where I had to visit. Happily or unhappily, all the prisons in the province of Punjab, all the prisons. And I saw with my own eyes that the conditions in which these prisoners gather of a low crime, high crime, medium crime, whatever. But more importantly, when I visited this court Lakhpat prison, which was actually housing juvenile delinquents, toddlers, young children, whatnot, who had been violated and made vulnerable by their society. And I sat with them, what is it that you want the society to do? Said somebody has to actually educate us. Somebody has to educate us. And I came back and I shared this with my students. Would you be interested to go spend maybe an hour, hour or two hours per week, if not more, and go sit with these children and give them hope that they have a life of their own? And that is something. And I learned that we have to take community service to protect our children so that they grow as a well-rounded human being and are of useful to the society. Third. Fourthly, and uh, luckily, I became a member of board of Aga Khan Rule Sports Program. And uh, after a few years, they also made me the vice chair of this board. And I said, I don't come from your ethnic background. I said, look, we are not here to promote our own brand of you know, uh, belief system. We want to promote all kind of beliefs together so that can we, can, we can do something together. And that assignment took me many times to Gilgit, Baldistan, and Chitra. And one of the important things that I saw was how some students and volunteers were trying to organize socially at the village level, both men and women. And it was an amazing experience. And as a consequence of that, the contact between the sports program and the community was that community would provide all kind of men resources to implement, implement project, but the foundation has to provide us some kind of financial support. And together, ladies and gentlemen, these communities were able to build small hydel project, small hydel project with their own hands, which Wabda could not manage and they were collecting the charges by themselves as a community. And I was told that at one point in time, Wabda came to this, them, that we cannot actually collect our own you know, kind of uh, bills. Would you help us? And they said, yes, we are organized. We can help you that also. And as a consequence of this pro these projects, the conditions of darkness in which they were living, now they had light. And it was actually some kind of a game changer for them living in those places. We went to meet a particular village organization. It was a women village organization. And the women were asked to make a flip chart presentation to the board where only one female was a member. And I want to share this with you, that this woman stood up in front of these men who were looking at her. And with the degree of confidence that made that presentation, that was an eye-opener for me. That if given a chance to organize themselves, even in these disadvantaged community, they can stand up if you empower them, and they can do all the development work by themselves. This was another you know, experience that I had. What I learned from this also, that maybe at times funding may not be, funding may not be available. Even small amount of funds provided to them 
will mobilize their physical resources and they will be willing to walk many miles with the small loan that they may provided in order to change their own fate in those areas. It was amazing to see that. Now, these are some of the things that I actually experience through my community service. And I don't want to actually preach standing here, but the question that I want to share with you is, what is the way forward? Is it a talk and we go away? Or are there some takeaway from this workshop? And I want to put before this house a few ideas for implementation. One, similar to corporate sector, where they have CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility. I will put before you the idea, why don't universities begin to think of setting up a university social responsibility center? Why not? And you may ask the question that we are already short of funds. You are giving us an idea to implement. Where would the funding will come? In this country, giving you a very conservative estimate, way back, there were about 500 billion rupees which was circulating in charity. The charity which was flowing through different formal and informal channels. And this was the data which was collected by Pakistan Center for Philanthropy which they are take, playing a game in terms of auditing these NGOs and other social organizations. That's ideal. What should it do? Number one, I would say, the move would bear me out, that I headed a social enterprise initiative at LAMS, which was funded by Canadian International Development Agency. This was a five-year project, and the main idea was to train NGO people and also to develop case studies. There are five volumes containing case studies on NGOs in this country. And this center should actually get those five volumes and put it into that center. Put it into that center. Thirdly, this center should actually develop a catalog of all important community service organization, whether small, medium size, or large size. And invite them from time to time, because we should not actually close our campuses from these people. They are the one who have done wonderful job, actually, in trying to develop these communities. So do that. Thirdly, I would suggest that it would be important for the VCs to consider that in the four years of graduates who are going to be with you, and I'm not going to make it very difficult, where I say, with the apology to Dr. Shah Munir, that we will hold back the degrees. Don't hold back the degrees. In the first year, first summer, one week of commitment to for community service, one week of commitment. In the second year, two weeks of commitment in the second summer. In the third year, three weeks of commitment for community work. And in the fourth year, make it four weeks, one month of community service. But again, I think if you have a center which is promoting social entrepreneurship, that they will be excited. They will be, they will be excited, that's what I'm saying. But not last, how do you excite your faculty? How do you excite your faculty? I would say I will change the present annual assessment report of the faculty in these universities. And I will turn it into what I call a annual performance agreement to be negotiated between faculty and the leadership, where one of the parameters of performance should be community service. Community service. And you can actually reduce their teaching load if they say that we will come back and do something and we will share that learning with you know, kind of thing. What was my personal learning from all this? And I want to concluded it. Personally, when I look back, as my experience through community service, I feel, ladies and gentlemen, that I am a better human being. I am, a, I hope, an effective teacher. I'm not a good teacher, an effective teacher, but I am a better human being. And this has made me to begin to develop 
healthy, effective relationship in my world. That is what I have learned from Kripti. That if you don't get out of your comfort zone and make yourself uncomfortable, but say discomfort, I think you will not be able to do it. You have to get out of your beyond campus, as they say this student, out of the ivory tower. Maybe sometimes you have to sit with village organization on the ground with them, regardless of your station in the hierarchy of work that you do. So that's very important. So that I became an effective teacher, I became a better human being, and so on. But what is the final lesson that I want to highlight here? And that is that if you actually begin to encourage and engage everybody in your academia, in the community service, they will go back, they will become better educated, and will become more social aware, and emotionally and, and feeling-wise, not cognitively, they will be actually engaged in this country. That work will actually also ignite in them the passion to be in Pakistan and to serve Pakistan and serve the community of Pakistan, which are dispossessed, which are disadvantaged. And I think if you do that, you will be making them master of their own destiny. That is a challenge. It is not simply a topic. That is, but discussion is something to do. Thank you very much. I hope I said something. Sir.